Hi, Sinon. Just a quick little note. You will see me looking up to check my notes from time to time. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything important that I have to share with you today. First person that gives me judgment or criticism gets to buy me a new teleprompter. Here we go. A huge thank you to my team who worked very hard at making this virtual convention a reality. Particularly Vicki Maines, Denise Nassev, and Bonnie Porteous who did a fantastic job getting it all together. Thank you to Barbara and Gordon Hawley who were so willing to try something new to raise funds for the foundation. And a big thank you to Terry Davis for her inspiring words and inducting our team for next year. I want to thank my family who have supported me this year through all of the uncertainty and challenges, especially my husband who agreed to continue this crazy ride for another year. I couldn't do it without you. This past year, we have seen a world in flux. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the world to a standstill, forcing us to take things slower and be more mindful of what we do and how we do it. It has also required us to find new and creative ways to stay connected and serve our communities. It has taught us the value of human contact, the appreciation of the simple things like a handshake, attending an optimist meeting, a favorite restaurant, coffee with a friend, and other privileges. We take the time to reflect and remember all those affected by this pandemic, whether it was a loss of a loved one or even the loss of income due to businesses being closed. I hope as we move forward, we don't forget to appreciate that which we took for granted before the pandemic. I want to talk about what to expect moving forward. I mentioned attending an optimist meeting is a privilege and in fact, and indeed, it is a privilege to be an optimist. We get to make a difference in our communities while building connections and friendships that will last a lifetime. As an optimist, it is our responsibility to ensure that we not only support our communities, but each other. In a president to president Zoom meeting last month, international president Adrian Elcock addressed an issue that quite frankly, I have seen in our district. He addressed the issue of bullying in our clubs and our districts, particularly from members who hold a position of leadership, such as president, lieutenant governor, governor, and he especially addressed past governors. I'm glad he did. We need to develop leadership within this wonderful organization. We can't expect to be successful if potential future leaders see negative examples from past leaders. Let me be more specific. If you attend a conference and you're rolling your eyes, openly complaining about the food, the sound system, the table next to you being too loud or having too much fun, or flat out bad mouthing others, then you are not being supportive, you're being a bully. If you have concerns, suggestions, or constructive criticism, then reach out by phone or email and talk to that person privately. Keep in mind that constructive criticism does not insult or demean. Be prepared to be asked to be involved in taking the steps to make our district stronger with the ideas you suggest. If you have been trusted to be a leader, it is your responsibility to lead with positivity and be approachable, lead by example. If you're a past leader, you have a responsibility to support the current leader and do everything you can to guide them and ensure that they are successful in the way that they want to be, not according to your secret agenda or what you want. By doing this, it ensures that the organization will continue to serve kids for many years to come and only become stronger with new leadership going forward. Now, with that out of the way, we can talk about strengthening our district. First, I need to thank Governor-elect Brian Wick for graciously agreeing to defer his year and allowing me to continue as governor next year. This completely changes our game plan for ending this year and starting next year. I encourage members to add new members this year. International Vice President Terry Davis has some great incentives and adding members at the end of this year will ensure that your club is stronger to start next year. Now, having said that, 
I also want you to take a hard look at your rosters and clean them up. Presidents, I want you to call all of your members, especially those you haven't heard or seen in a long time. And with this pandemic, that could be quite a few of them. If your membership base is really big, then take the list and split it amongst your secretary treasurer or other executive members to help you reach out to members. By checking in, you will find out who's coming back and who's not. Please encourage them to come back and keep your club strong with a retention, good retention. But if you know that there are members who are not coming back, then please delete them now. Clean your roster now. Don't wait until October 1st. Do it now or before September 30th. That way, you know how many members you need to replace. And by cleaning up your roster now, we can start October 1st, hit the ground running with a clean slate. Last year, I spoke about our Indigenous youth. I spoke about their challenges and the history of the First Nations people. I will be continuing that this year. We will reach out to First Nations people and communities to support them and learn from them. The Fund, Fund a Feather project will continue. And just as a reminder, the Fund a Feather project uh, is there to honor the memory of the people lost in the residential schools and the victims of residential schools. It's meant to honor and um, aid the children and indigenous youth in our communities with the money we fundraise. So far, we've raised just over 2,000 feathers, but we still have 4,000 feathers to go. The Feathers Recognition Program is a huge success. At the beginning of the year, I asked presidents to lead by example and honor their members with feathers that they can get themselves. And I started each club off with 10 and I encourage you to keep going with that this year. I also have the Governor's Feather Recognition Program. To date, we have given out over 150 Governor's Feathers. These are hand-painted feathers for optimists who have been nominated by fellow optimists who felt they were deserving of an extra special recognition. Please continue to send me those nominations and at the in-person convention next year in August at the Ramada in Jackson's Point, the powwow in Georgina. I want you to wear all the feathers that you have earned with pride. This year, I introduced Gab with the Governor, a monthly Facebook Live that allowed me to keep connected with our members and update people on the happenings in our district. I will be continuing Gab with the Governor next year, as well as the monthly newsletter that I've been sending out. I will also be implementing more communication via Zoom with the Lieutenant Governors and the Presidents. Lieutenant Governors, I will be meeting with you via Zoom monthly to check in, see how things are going in your clubs and see what I can offer and swap ideas and see what we can do to support your clubs. Presidents, I will be meeting with you bi-monthly. Um, to check in with you, same thing, share ideas, check in with your clubs and see how I can best support you and how we as a district can support each other. Lieutenant Governors, I would like you to meet with your presidents on a regular basis, either together via Zoom or individually with a phone call or Zoom and uh, stay connected to them with their activities and the stuff happening in their clubs so that you can best support them and keep me informed as well. Everybody, I am available by email, text, phone. Call me anytime. Best way to get me is by email. And I will get back to you as soon as I can with any support I can offer. I'm glad to be there. Please inform me of everything your club is doing, whether it's online or in person, and I will do my best to attend everything you do and be a part of it and support you especially the zone meetings. The best part of being governor was getting to go out and meet all the members and see all the wonderful ways they're serving their communities. Let me be perfectly clear. A lot of clubs in our district have forged ahead despite COVID-19 and have found a way to stay connected not only to each other, but to serve their communities with new activities and projects to serve the need out there. Going forward, I expect all clubs to do the same. 
and get back to being as active as they can be, or maybe even more so. Now, we're six months into this pandemic and the social guidelines, social distancing guidelines that go with it. So, we can't use it as a reason not to be active anymore. And even if, God forbid, we end up with a second wave, we know how to tackle it now. We know how to stay connected online and get activities done online. At the Town Hall Idea Swap for online activities and ideas, you got a few ideas there, and we can continue that dialogue going to ensure that we serve our communities and each other and be prepared in case we have to do it all online. I truly believe that we are called to serve all youth, regardless of race, creed, religion, sexual orientation, or disabilities or exceptionalities. To do this, we need all types of optimists. Think of it this way. Our district is good, strong stock. And in order to have a great soup, you need a foundation of good stock. But in order to have fantastic, amazing soup, you need flavor, spice, and variety. I mentioned in a video last month that I wanted to shake up our district like a snow globe and make it sparkle. I'm going to do this by spreading one word. Ready? Diversity. As I also mentioned last year, we will be building awe clubs, clubs for adults with exceptionalities across our district to provide a place for these valuable volunteers to have not only a place to learn, grow, and belong, but to offer us a boost of enthusiasm and much needed volunteer service power. I also have a plan to build LGBTQ plus clubs across our district. LGBTQ plus youth have some of the highest suicide and homelessness rates. By building clubs with members from the LGBTQ plus community and the allies who support them, we can make a difference for LGBTQ plus youth. I am dedicated to showcasing this diverse community who are powerful and passionate in the way they volunteer and serve the community. We already have three potential leads for LGBTQ plus youth in Oshawa, Niagara Falls, and Toronto. If you want to be a part of this initiative, either join these clubs, support them, sponsor them, and help make history together we can spread beautiful rainbows and much needed color across our district and our communities. We have leads on another two adult optimist clubs within zones nine and zone six. We're working on this now. I need members in those zones who are willing to sponsor or be a part of building these clubs to lend a hand and reach out to me. Help us get it done. If your club has a lead on building a new club, again, reach out to me and I will get you the support either of myself or my new club building chair and the team and OI will help you be successful in getting it done. I'm calling on clubs to consider sponsoring the building of a new club and discuss it so that it could be part of your budget for the 2020-2021 year. Even if you don't have a club that you want to build in your area or the town next to you. Please be willing to sponsor the building of a new club as we have leads and we need the support to get it done. By doing this, you not only are eligible then to be a distinguished club, but you make a huge difference in the areas and communities we build new clubs in. International President Designate Mark Weinsoft has a theme next year of choose optimism. I believe we can do this best by not letting challenges derail or uproot our best intentions and good efforts, similar to the way COVID-19 did this year. We're better prepared and we can be active next year regardless of what comes our way. I believe we can do this by recruiting new and passionate optimists to join our organization and serve kids everywhere. I believe we can do this by asking people that we hadn't considered asking to be optimists before. 
My slogan is building dreams for kids. All kids. All youth. The only way to fulfill the goal of building dreams for kids is to choose change. Choose perseverance. Choose kindness. Choose acceptance. Choose difference. Choose diversity. Forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements by choosing optimism. Are you ready? Let's sparkle.